What's up guys, Carter here from Fireproof Plants and today we're going to be talking about some ancient outliers in the plant world. Succulent gymnosperms, specifically Welwitchia and the cycads. These are relatives of pine trees that have evolved in desert conditions and because of that they have some unique care requirements. Luckily, the people at Plants for the Southwest are experts at this. And the manager here, Anthony, is gonna give us a private tour of their growing grounds and all of the amazing xeric plants that they have growing here. I just fell in love with the Wellwitchias this last few years. I just sowed a ton of seeds, but these are just the babies that have started so far. They grow really quick in the first few months. What we've kind of found out about the Wellwitchias is that although they're from a really dry place, they need a consistent source of water. We water them quite often. When they're seedlings, it's almost every day to keep them super wet. Once their true leaves are about the size of their cotyledons, we go down to like once a week watering, sometimes twice a week if it's a really, really hot week. And then we just stay on a pretty much once a week schedule for the rest of their life. In the winter time, we cut that down in volume so it's less water not really drenching the pot or having much drip out the bottom. One of the most common ways that people kill them is by letting them dry out. They need consistent water. One of the theories is that they have these perched water tables. Depending on where you are, a few inches to a few feet down beneath the surface of the soil is a really, really hard layer of calcium carbonate. And we call it caliche here. I don't know if it has another name in Namibia, but there's similar features where these plants are native to. And basically, if there's a big rainstorm up in the mountains, the water runs down and collects in these perched water tables, and it's there almost all the time. So these plants have roots that get down to that water, and then they go sideways along the horizon and so they have a pretty consistent source of water even though it rains like two inches a year there which is very 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 tiny we get almost a foot of rain here in a good year so this is mom and dad this is the male wellwitchia and the female this is where the pollen comes from and these are where the seeds come from this is just one stalk of female cones. I'm kind of interested in the genetics of the plants. They're super cool because they are gymnosperms, so they're related to pine trees and conifers, and Wellwitchias have probably undergone a whole genome duplication event. Their genome is full of what's called transposons, which are like little pieces of DNA that can copy themselves and hop out and move around the genome, and so they're undergoing evolution as we speak. Another plant in this house that I really like are the figs. We have some figs over here. These are just starting. They're ficus palmeri, the Sonoran rock fig. And they have this really cool codex as well, even just as a seedling. This was sown last year. And what we like to do with the rock figs is kind of simulate how you'll see them in some canyons in Sonora, where their roots are growing over the rocks. We will grow a plant in a two inch pot for a while, and then we'll grow it in a gallon sized pot for a year. And then when they have nice long roots, we'll take them out of those pots and we'll wrap the roots around a rock and then we cover it in moss. This is like just floral moss. So they go on these benches and they're repotted and wrapped onto these rocks during the monsoon season when it's super humid. And then we put the moss on to cover the roots and then we tie them up so that they stay attached. And about a year later, we test them and if we can kind of move them around, like this guy's still a little bit too loose. Personally, I wouldn't uncover it yet. And over time, it's gonna start to hug that rock. I love the figs because there's also sometimes escapees. This guy, you can see his roots are kind of trying to get out of the pot. And you can see here, this sprinkler leaks a tiny bit. And so there's always a little bit of water here and they're growing into the table. This is in a gallon pot on this table. 
but we just let it sit here for too long and the roots have grown down and they're hugging the cinder block that the table is on and reaching into the ground. The figs have a really cool pollination system that uses wasps and there's wasps who will go into one fig, collect a bit of pollen and then move to another fig and go and they actually lay their eggs inside the fig and they complete their life cycle inside of the fig. So this is our cycad pool. When the house was first built, they wanted a pool. And Jane and Jean enjoyed the pool for the first few years that they worked here. But it just wasn't worth all of the maintenance to keep it super clean and swimmable. So they built this little wood platform that I'm standing on. And since then it has become the cycad pool. The cycads, we also water once a week, pretty much year round. I believe that they'll get a really small spray multiple times a week when it's super, super hot and super dry. Like this year, we haven't had a lot of monsoons, so we've been watering a little extra. They're really cool plants. They've been around for so, so long. These are some of the first plants to have colonized the land. They're also, like the Wellwitches, they're gymnosperms. So they don't have flowers, they have cones. And when they cone, actually you can smell it. They have a really distinct smell to the pollen. It almost smells like sweet corn. Like and subscribe and comment with any plant-related stories you'd like us to cover.